Hello again. Welcome back to Introducing Persistence. In this lesson, we'll look at how our My Library object is written in XML and look at some options in the Xtream library for customizing this. Then we'll learn how to use Eclipse to compare two versions of a file for changes. Let's start by looking at our XML file. We can open it using the Eclipse XML editor. We'll select the Package Explorer. We'll expand the Persistence Tutorial project and select it. Now notice we don't have it listed here right now. It's because we need to refresh the project. So we'll right click, select Refresh, or we could have pressed F5. And now our testmylibrary.xml file appears in the package view. If we double click, we can open it for editing. Eclipse has an XML editor that gives us two views of the file. We'll double click to expand it. The design view, which is what we're looking at here, gives us a tree structure to look at the file. So it says the top level is org persistence tutorial my library. Then we have the name, and then below that we have books and people, and then below the books and people we have the individual book objects and the individual person objects. Then we can also click this tab down here and look at the actual XML source, which is perhaps what we're more familiar with, which is the text or source code for this XML file. Now notice that we're using the full package and class name org persistence tutorial my library for our classes and we'll take a look at an option we can change that that's the default option that Xtreme uses is a full package and class name now let's look at how we're handling the idea of nested objects so here we have the books list and inside the books list we have book number one and then inside book number one we have a person object with name Fred and maximum books of three. Now Fred also needs to be in the people list down below. Now let's look how Xtreme handles this. For the first person where we would have Fred it has a reference and we can see that the reference has this dot dot slash dot dot slash books. Now the reason for this is we need to make it clear that the person object here is the same as the person object up here. We don't want to just repeat Fred and Maximum Books 3 down here. Otherwise there'd be no way to know that this person and this person are the same object. So the XML file here is handling this by using what's called a relative reference. And basically it's saying go back two levels, then go down into the books org persistence tutorial book person level, and that's where you'll find the information for this person. So it's saying go back up two levels, then come down into books, and then come down into person and then here's where you'll find Fred's information. So that's how Xtreme knows that when it reconstructs the My Library object from this XML file, it knows that this person and this person are the same object. Next, we're going to edit and save our XML file just so we can use the Eclipse Compare Editor later in the lesson. So we'll just go up to this first line click at the end, add a single space, and press the Save button. We need to do this so that this version of the file will be saved in the file's local history, and we'll see this later in the lesson. At this point, we can save our My Library object to an XML file. Now if we don't care about the details of the XML file format, we're pretty much done with this part of the exercise. However, Let's look at some options we have with the Xtreme library to change the way the XML is rendered. The first option is to customize the class names 
in the XML file. We do this using an alias command, which is documented in the Xtream tutorial. Let's try it in our convert to XML method. So we'll open my utilities. We'll find the convert to XML method. So here we're going to insert three alias commands. We'll say xtreme.alias person person class and then we'll copy this and paste it and we'll change person to book and my library. So this is just telling the extreme method to put the word person for the person class, book for the book class, and my library for the my library class. So we'll save. Let's go back and run our test. We can rerun our test just by pressing this rerun test button once we've already run it in a session. And we'll rerun it. And uh oh we've got a problem. And the problem is we put the alias commands in the convert to XML, but we forgot to put them in the convert from XML. So we'll hit the left arrow here to go back to where we were. And we will just copy these three lines of code. We'll put them right after we declare the Xtreme object. We'll save. Now let's go back to my utilities test. Rerun our test. And this time it works. And let's go back to the test my library. Now it says the file has been changed on the file system. Yes, we want to reload the changes. If we maximize here, we can see that now we say my library instead of the full name or persistence tutorial my library. And the same thing for book and the same thing for person. So this gives us complete control over what we call our objects inside the XML file. Now next, Let's look at a second way that Xtreme allows us to handle the object reference issue. And this is to use unique ID numbers for each object instead of using the relative reference. To do this, we just add one line of code in both of the convert methods. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll open that for editing. And again, we'll just come up here to after we declare the object. And we just go extreme set mode extreme dot ID references. And then we'll put that same exact line of code down here. We'll save, go back to the test. We run the test. It passes. Open the test my library for editing. Say yes. And now we see that it's giving each object an ID, one through however many objects we have. So now the reference to Fred in the people list just says this is object number four. So when this My Library object is reconstructed, Xtream can do the following. When it creates Book 1, it creates a new person object with fields Fred and 3. Then when it creates the People Array list, the first person in the list is the person from the Book 1 person field. So the result is that these are the same object. Before we end, let's use Eclipse to show us the differences between the earlier version of this file 
and the current one. To do this, we'll right click anywhere on the file, say compare with local history. It shows us the prior versions of this file based on the time and date that they were saved. We'll double click on the oldest one here. And now we get the compare window that shows us all the differences between the two files. So here we have the current version of the file, over here we have the old version, and all these highlighted areas are places where the two files are different. And we have buttons up here that let us copy changes or move to the next difference and so forth. Every time we save, Eclipse automatically keeps prior versions of all source files including Java, XML, and text. We can use the Compare with Local History to see all the changes we've made and to restore prior versions if needed. We can also control how much history to keep in the workspace by going to Window, Preferences, General, Workspace, Local History. We can say how many days, how many entries, and so forth. This is a very powerful feature of Eclipse and can be very helpful when you need to see what was changed in a file or to restore an older version of a file. At this point, we've learned how to save Java objects to XML files. In the next lesson, we'll look at using the local history to compare versions of Java source files. We'll learn how to create an executable JAR file for our project and we'll actually run our program in Windows and in Linux. This is the end of Lesson 9. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.